Rita Cowan, a name you've probably never heard before. How did this Scottish woman from a town near Glasgow end up in Japan over 100 years ago and become instrumental in the origins of founding Japanese whiskey and one of Japan's biggest whiskey companies? Rita Cowan is well known in Japan, with a popular TV show being made about her and even an entire street being named after her. But ask anyone here in Scotland about Rita Cowan and you'll probably be met with a blank expression. This is a story which has personally fascinated me ever since I heard about it over seven years ago. I hope that by sharing Rita Cowan's story in this video, more people can know about this incredible woman and how her and her Japanese husband Masataka built one of Japan's most successful and best known whiskey distilleries. Let's start at the beginning. Rita was born in 1896 in the town of Kirkintillich near Glasgow in Scotland. She was the daughter of a local doctor and with her three siblings lived in one of the finest houses in the town. Many young men of her generation were killed in the First World War, including the man she was engaged to marry. In 1918, her father died of a heart attack and the family fell into a difficult financial situation. With the family breadwinner gone, Rita's mother even considered selling the family's nine bedroom home. Taking in a lodger was an ordinary thing to do, so they did just that. Although the lodger they took in was no ordinary man. He was a young, fiercely ambitious Japanese chemist named Takatsuru Masataka. He'd come to Scotland to study chemistry and to learn how to make the finest Scotch whiskey. Rita's younger sister Ella had met him at Glasgow University where she was studying medicine. Rita and Masataka fell in love and Masataka then revealed to her his wish to help him in making real whiskey in Japan. They married in 1920 in a simple ceremony at a registry office. Although the Takatsuru family, from a long line of wealthy and well-connected Hiroshima sakiburus, was against his unconventional choice of wife. Rita's mother wasn't impressed either and when she found out about the marriage she asked for it to be annulled. I've made the journey to Kirk and Tillich to find out more about Rita and Masataka's lives here. The Old Kirk Museum and Kirk and Tillich have held exhibitions about Rita in the past and also have some interesting photos and items on display. The team at the Old Kirk Museum were really kind to show me around. Yeah, so this is the personalities case. So it's got different people from Kirk and Tillich's past who've made an impact in the world. Um, obviously, one of the largest sections is the Big in Japan, which is Rita's kimono. So this was donated to the museum uh, in the 1980s. So it was 19, uh, 1919 that they lived here, was it? Yes, in yeah. Kirkintilloch? Yeah, so they got married in 1920. Um, they stayed in Kirkintilloch just maybe like a five minute walk from here. Unfortunately, that house, um, Middlecroft, doesn't exist anymore. And then, so how long would it take for Masataka to travel into Glasgow University from Kirk and Tillich? And how would he have travelled? At that time, I suppose there was the, um, there was train lines coming out here, but they were all industrial, so the, the passenger line would have been from Lindsay. So mm -hmm. chances are he would have just got a bus into town or mm -hmm. walked to Lindsay Station and taken that. So that's maybe about a half hour walk from Kirk and Tillich out to Lindsay Station. And is Nika whiskey famous in Kirk and Tillich? Like do the bars and restaurants here serve it or is it? I, I think it is, we, we have a, there's, there is a shop here that sells um, different whiskies. Um, I haven't been in recently, but I would be very surprised if they don't stock it. They definitely stock Nika whiskey um, in Glasgow in some of the different places. Um, the museum has had whisky tastings and we got specifically to, um, people to come out from Good Spirit Company to basically do a Nika whisky tasting, which was fantastic, it was really popular. So yeah, that'd be something we'd want again. Did you have many visitors from Japan come to Kirk and Tillich because they've watched we, the NHK yeah, demo? Yeah, we do. Pre-Covid there was an awful lot more, it was a bit of a stopping point. The, um, people visiting Britain as a whole, maybe if they're doing coach tours, they would, um, it was a one of the, the places we'd often get the, the coach tours going up and saying, oh, can we come and visit? Um, at that point, the kimono was down at the museum rather than up here. Um, but yeah, we do get people popping in just from Glasgow. They know it's not too far, so they'll come and visit. It's really amazing that this story is so popular in Japan. Mm -hmm. I find it really amazing, but then no one really knows about it in Scotland. Yeah, yeah. So that's really interesting. I know, Why do you I think know. that is? 
because she's a small town girl mm. and I suppose like a lot of her big influence it was over in, in Japan um, at the time I think because it was maybe not accepted by everybody that she was in a relationship and got married to someone from a, a different country, a different ba culture and background. So yeah, this is one of our boxes of items to do with Rita and Masataka. So this is stuff, basically anything in our collection is, is owned by the public, so anyone can request to come in and see this stuff. Photo of Rita in her kimono and her obi. Love to see there's the she's wearing underneath the um wee one with the Sakura flower. Well, it looks oh, like yeah. Sakura to me. Oh, wow. So this was produced by Nikam. So it's got a lot of nice photographs in it. It's, I think it's quite interesting. There's a lot of the images you see, like the popular ones of Rita, she's not smiling in them. She looks quite dour. Mm. And then occasionally you'll get one that's she's actually she's clearly very a cheery person. And I know that us Scots are a bit known for being dear folk. But There's the picture of the bear. I remember seeing those in the museum in um, in Japan. I think oh, quite wow. enjoyed the bear hunting. Bear hunting. In wow. Hokkaido, there's a lot of bears. Masataka's biography. Although I can't read the second part. But this part, first part says whiskey. <laughs> wow. So this is available to buy, is it, in Japan? Is as it? far as I know, yeah. I think it was... Yes, I mean, I would love to read this, but... Uh, it's not in my skill set. We need an English translation. Yeah. <laughs> a matriculation card from Glasgow Uni. Okay, so he was age 24 when he signed it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Father's Christian name, Kei Zino. Father's occupation, chemical engineer. Is father alive? Yes. Wow, so interesting. And then there's, oh yeah, the present address. And then home address. The people that used to work in the museum. Um, one of the past curators, her mother, I think it was, was a um, housekeeper for Cowans. Mm -hmm. Or no, her grandmother, that's what her grandmother was a housekeeper. So she, there's like a wee interview about working for the Cowans. I get the impression that they were like quite a like sort of upper class family since they had a housekeeper and then when the father was alive they had the car as well. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of it it was I mean that's why like they took on the lodgers and like mass attack um, mm. was to try and fill that gap. So that's just printed off from online um from Rita's funeral. Wow. Is that um that's her is that her at the back there quite elderly? Looking? Yeah that's yeah. that's Rita there previous curator and this is one of the, mas the master blender who came over so he presented the the biography of um, Master Taka Takatsura to the museum. Mr. Shigo Sato-san and that's the one that you just showed me before? Yes yeah, that's yeah, just okay. the one I showed you before yeah so that's um, Meadowcroft. Oh in the Japanese newspaper. Yeah. I've just arrived at the location where the house was that Masataka and Rita lived in when they were in Kirk and Tillich and when Masataka was a lodger. Unfortunately the house was sold to the council and demolished and there's now a road in its place. However behind me you can see this old nightclub and then up here is the library and luckily the stained glass window which was in the house. When you walk into the library above the door you can see the old stained glass window which was really incredible. It's still interesting to come here and see the location of where the house was. It's actually really central in the middle of the town. It would have just taken a couple of minutes to walk into the main area where all the shops were and also to the town hall which is where a lot of the activities were back in the day like dances and also there were movies shown in the town hall as well. I've arrived here in Peel Park, which is a beautiful park in the middle of Kirkintillic town. There's stunning views over the hills in the distance and it's located probably around a three to four minute walk from where the house would have been where Rita and Masan would have lived at the time. In Japan, it seems that Masataka is known as Masan and that's what the TV show was called. So if anyone does know why it was called Masan and not Masataka, please share in the comments below. I'm very interested to know. I've always known the couple as Masan and Rita rather than Masataka and Rita. Because this park was so close to the house, it mentioned in the museum that this would have been a place that Masataka and Rita probably came quite often. Um, it's funny to think that they probably sat in this same park and enjoyed the same views as me but over a hundred years ago.
While in Scotland, Masataka gained hands-on experience of whisky making through different apprenticeships before moving to Campbelltown, which at the time was home to a large number of whisky distilleries. This is Campbelltown, located on the Mull of Kintyre Peninsula, southwest of Glasgow. It's now home to around 5,000 people. It's known as one of Scotland's five whisky making regions, and it's here that Mustaka came to learn more about whisky. He worked with a Dr Innes, who was an authority within the whisky industry, and he was here for around six months. At the time Masataka was studying here in Campbelltown, there were around 15 to 20 distilleries and it eventually peaked at 30, but now there are only three. It was after his time here in Campbelltown that he felt ready to start making whiskey and he headed back to Japan with Rita. Masataka did return to Campbelltown around 20 years later after World War and at that time there were only two whiskey distilleries remaining here. It's been really nice to walk around Campbelltown. There's so many lovely old buildings and it's located on the water. It's a beautiful place. The young couple left for their new life in Japan in November 1920. Masataka put his newfound distilling skills to use with a job at Suntory, which was planning to become the first whisky maker in Japan. However, whisky was slow to catch on in the Japanese market, and it wasn't until 1935 that a breakthrough was made. After working at Suntory for 10 years, Masataka left the company and established his own company, Nika, and built the distillery at Yoichi on the northern Japanese island of Hokkaido. After Masataka opened the distillery in Yuichi, Rita continued to support him. Although Rita was allowed to stay in Yuichi during the Pacific War because she'd become a Japanese citizen, the Japanese military police kept her under constant surveillance as a suspected foreign spy. They even raided her home several times and accused her of having radio equipment to contact Allied submarines. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, neighbours turned against her. She was ignored in the street and children would throw rocks at her home. For four decades, Rita helped her husband build one of Japan's most successful and well-known whiskey distilleries. In 1955, Rita suffered from liver disease and tuberculosis and began spending the summers in Yoichi and the winters in Kanagawa, where Masataka stayed during his business trips to Tokyo. However, in the autumn of 1960, she returned to Yoichi and died there in January 1961. She is buried in Yoichi together with her husband, who later died in 1979. When new council offices were built in Kirkintillic in 1985, the Cowan's former home Middlecroft was demolished. Although there were some rumours of Nika Whiskey wanting to disassemble it brick by brick and ship it to Hokkaido. The Nika Whiskey distillery in Hokkaido is a major tourist attraction and I visited the distillery twice. I've loved seeing all the Scottish items and the connections to Scotland. There's even a street named after Rita in Yuichi and it's called Rita Street. In 2014, a 150 episode TV drama called Masan was aired on NHK, Japan's major TV network. This drama was based on the story of Masataka and Rita. It brought the story to the attention of millions of Japanese viewers and the domestic market demand for premium Japanese whiskey jumped rapidly. I've spent a lot of time living in Japan over the last seven years and whenever I tell Japanese people I'm from Scotland, I'm often met with the response, Masan, as they immediately think of the story of Masataka and Rita. I became so interested in this story that I rented the DVDs of the TV drama and I've almost finished watching them all. The reason the story resonates with me so much is because I can really put myself in Rita's shoes. Living in Japan, so far away from your home country, your family and your friends, is difficult enough even in this day and age. But to do so over a hundred years ago, before airplane travel and before these modern forms of communication, it must have been a very, very challenging time. The fact that Rita embraced life in Japan and only ever returned to Scotland twice after leaving is just remarkable. For anyone who's living in Japan or planning to visit Japan and who has an interest in this story, I highly recommend you to visit the Nika Whiskey Distillery in Hokkaido. Even if you don't like whiskey, it's such a special place and it's amazing to see where Rita lived. Since I moved back to Scotland from Japan, I've had many requests from Japanese viewers to visit Kirkintillic and explore more about the story of Masataka and Rita. I hope for those of you watching from Japan, you enjoyed seeing Kirkintillic, the town where Rita and Masataka met. Thank you to the Old Kirk Museum in Kirk and Tillich, and I hope that by sharing this story, more people can know about the amazing woman that is Rita Cowan. If 
you'd like to follow more of my adventures exploring Scotland, please subscribe to the channel. See you next time. Bye.